Welcome to Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are white, all ready to harvest. For over half a century, the Evangelistic Outreach team has traveled across the street, about the nation, and around the world with the gospel message. We're dedicated to the vision of our late founder, Dr. Calvin Evans, to reach the unreached for Jesus Christ. May the love of Christ touch you, and may His Word teach you today on Evangelistic Outreach. Well, we are so excited about the program today, and not only the program, but this week of meetings. I'm telling you, it's going to be a fantastic week. We're going to tell you a little more about it in just a little while. But right now, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you for such a great day that you've given to us. It's a great day because we can tell people about how great that you are, how wonderful that you are. No wonder the psalmist says, great is the Lord. And we thank you for every blessing that you bestowed upon us, for the way you've been pouring out your spirit in service after service, those that have been responding and people that are coming to Christ and being saved, the lives that you've allowed this ministry to touch and bless, and then the friends that have rallied around us. How could we ever thank you enough? Lord, I just pray now that you'll anoint the songs, anoint the message as it goes out. Everything that is done, may it be done with one purpose in mind, and that is, to lift you up because all the glory is yours anyway. But thank you for being so good to us. Bless our friends that have tuned in to worship together with us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's start things off. You're going to enjoy this today. I believe the Lord will bless you through it. So let's join the song. Will every hope that I have you in this all sinful world The joy of knowing Jesus will vanish all my fears, for it took away destiny, and my heart is of the precious Lamb of God. Only one thing will matter when the time shall come to die. The treasures of this world won't mean a thing. Oh, but the 
joy of knowing Jesus will vanish all my fears for it took away this thing and my whole of the precious Lamb of God For it's washed away my sin It gave me peace and joy within And my hope is anchored in His blood Bless His name Well, glory to God. What a night we had at the Calvin and Doris Evans Memorial Camp Meeting on Thursday and Friday night. That was the opening night, and the Lord poured out His power in the services there. And we are so thrilled to be able to offer this to you this week. Uh, we were touched by the tremendous crowd. Let me take a moment and uh, thank those of you for your patience. We had no way of anticipating what the crowd would be. And when we got to nearly an hour before service and the sanctuary was filled, after the sanctuary was filled, the choir loft was filled, the stage was filled, then they went out into the foyer and it filled up, another room filled up, and I know that it may have been difficult on some of you with physical challenges, but uh, we praise God for your patience with us, but what a refreshing thing to see that many people come to worship the Lord. And you talk about a meeting. We had a tremendous meeting there, both Thursday and Friday night. Now, this month's free gift offer is available of that Thursday night service. And we'll be joining part of the message that was shared there on that Thursday night. And I think as we focused on praise and picking up our praise, that I think God will use it to encourage your heart not only today, but in days to come. And if you'd like to receive that, it's available absolutely free of charge when you contact us this week. We'll give you the information in just a few moments. But I do need to tell you this, as wonderful as last month was with the great meetings and tremendous success spiritually of people being saved, it was one of the most devastating months we have ever faced financially in the ministry in recent months. Uh, I, I know that this ministry touches a lot of hearts and lives. I know you've given above and beyond for special causes, for missionary projects, but there is a time where that I need to let you know to be on television, to be involved in internet ministry, to have all the free gift offers that's available. We can only do that by one way, by one means, and that is by you responding to the appeal that we give. I trust that if God touches your heart, about rallying to help this ministry. If this television ministry means anything to you at all, would you pray about sending a special gift today? We really do need to hear from you, and we'll be glad to get out the free gift offer whether you can send anything or not, and I mean that. We have freely received, we freely give, but we do need to hear from you today. So I hope you'll contact us. And before we give the contact information, let me tell you about a wonderful week of meetings this week. On uh, today, if you're watching on Sunday, we will start the homecoming and revival at the church that the Lord has allowed me to be the pastor of and Brian the assistant pastor there at the Rubyville Community Church. It's located five miles north of New Boston, Ohio on State Route 139. And at 9.30 a.m. will be the worship service. And then we'll have lunch at noon. Then at 2 p.m. the Lohr family will be singing. And then at 7.30 on 
Sunday evening through Wednesday evening. We'll have worship service every night in the revival. Mike Blanton and Mike McCoy will be serving as our evangelists. Mike Blanton and Evidence will be singing in the services with the exception of this afternoon and the Lore family will be singing then and we'd love for you to come and worship with it. A lot of you have said, let me know when something special is going on at the church. Well, this is a great time to worship together with us. 7.30 each evening, again, 9.30 this morning, 2 o'clock this afternoon, 7.30 every evening through Wednesday evening. And then on Thursday evening, I will be going to the City Mission Church in Ireton, Ohio, where Jeff Cremeen's pastors, and we're looking so forward to that. They'll have special singing all week long. We'll be thrilled on Friday night, the Rubyville Community Church Choir will be joining me there in that meeting. They have great singing, 7 o'clock each evening, and then on next Sunday afternoon at 1.30 will be their homecoming service that I'll be preaching in there as well. So come and worship with us. Now, here's the contact information. If you need details of the gift offer, about the special meetings, or if you'd like to even securely make a donation to the ministry, give us a call, 800-767-8713, or you can write us, 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio, zip code 45662, or you can visit us on the website, calvinevans.org. Are you ready for a blessing today? I pray that God stirs your heart and stirs your spirit as we join the service there at Christ Temple Church in the Calvin and Doris Evans Memorial Camp Meeting. Lord, you've been so good to us. Thank you, Father. Oh, Lord, you're so good to us. We're just getting started tonight. How we thank you for being here would mean so much to my parents uh, to know, to know that you care this much. And how can I ever thank all of you for giving your time and the primitives and the McCamies and uh, dad started working with them, each one of them, in the early years of their ministry. And of course, God gave dad over 50 years in the ministry. And I just started my 43rd year in preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone tells me I've got to change, I've got to do this and I've got to do that, but I'm too near home now. I, uh, I am what I am, I, 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 I can't change, I don't wanna change really. You know, you find what God made you to be and you stay with it and give God the glory for it. And I was thrilled to see we had a wonderful honor and uh, it, just a few days before the meeting, a friend of mine sent through some video that you saw earlier of dad at a baptismal service uh, just a few years after he started into preaching, and that was part of a series of revival that went on for 13 weeks. A lot of those folks were saved in during that revival. Boy, we need a revival like that in America. We really do. We need God to do great things. I, I won't be up long because it won't take me long to say what I have to say, and, uh, and I know that we're all here to honor the McCamies and we wanna do that tonight and give them ample time. But still, I'm just one of those kind of preachers that think you ought to have a little bit of the word with you when you go your way. And uh, they go together, they go together. That's why God put a song book, the Psalms in the Bible. And that's why he gave us a whole hymnal inside the Bible because songs, songs teach us a lot. I remember as a boy preacher one time, picking up a book by Mrs. John R. Rice. And uh, I've, I've searched and searched for it ever since, but she made a quote in that. She said she was confident that a lot of people learn more good doctrine from solid songs than they would ever listen to preachers. It's not that the doctrine was wrong from the preachers, but what happens, they start singing the song and before they know it, the words get down inside of them and does something to them. We've seen the evidence of that tonight. And uh, we just praise God for what he's doing. Now, people have come in to this place with a lot of, uh, I mean, it's taken, it's taken a lot of strength for them to get here. We've got folks here tonight on oxygen. We've got folks that came in wheelchairs. 
we got folks that's already been standing for over an hour. Yeah, isn't that great? God bless y'all and uh, people in the overflow. We're, we're so thankful for your patience. And uh, that they've paid a price to be here. But I think sometimes, have you ever been to the place that something inside of you said, I gotta get there. I gotta be in that service. I don't know what I'm facing today. I don't know what I'm going through today. But something tells me, if I can just get to the house of God tonight, that God's got something for me. And you know that's been the principle of the word of God throughout the Bible. When we get in the presence of God, now don't misunderstand me, God doesn't live in just Christ Temple Church. He lives in our heart. And not only does he live in our heart, but everywhere that we go, the earth and the fullness thereof is the Lord's. That's why, that's why when we talk about, oh, God move, God can't move. He's everywhere. Where's he gonna, where's he gonna move to? Psalmist said, if I take the wings of the morning, thou art there. He said, if I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. He said, if I go to the uttermost parts of the sea, thou art there. By the way, God was already here before I got here and before you got here. But we know sometime when we come together in one mind and one accord and the presence of the Lord is there, God's going to do something so unusual. In 1 Samuel 21, David is in terrible trouble. He's distressed. He has the, the fury of King Saul against him and David didn't do anything wrong. Now I'm not saying that David hadn't sinned in his life. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God, the Bible teaches, but what I'm saying is there was no other reason for Saul to do what he did except for a couple of things. First, he was jealous of David and second of all, he realized that because he wouldn't do what God wanted and was disobedient to God, God raised up somebody else. Now let's get this right. If you won't do it, God will find somebody that will. God's not gonna make you serve him, live for him. God won't make you go to heaven. God won't make you say amen. God won't make you pray. God won't make you read your Bible. God's not in the business of making us do things. He doesn't want robots. He wants people that love him with all of their heart, soul, strength, and mind and come to the place where they say, I wanna do this because I love the Lord. So he's in trouble and he has to flee so quick. He doesn't have time to get any possessions together. He doesn't have time to get anything that rightfully belongs to him. He's on the run now, has a company with him. He's just running for his life and he doesn't wanna say anything negative against the king. Even though he's anointed, he still respects what God has done through Saul. You don't have to agree with others to respect others. So David, this is what I love about David. David said, you know, if I could get to the tabernacle, and you find out in 1 Samuel chapter 21, the tabernacle is now separated from the Ark of the Covenant temporarily where the glory of God came down. It's now at a place called Nob. Nob is just past the north, the top north side of the Mount of Olives. Nob is known in the Bible according to the book of Kings as the city of the priest. The reason that it's there is that's where the priests live. And he says, if I can just get there, I think that everything I need I'll find it at the house of God. So he was determined if he had to crawl there, if he had to sneak in through the back door, if he had to come and stand, if he had to come and drag his oxygen along with him, he said, if I can just get to the house of God, I think I can find what I need. And the first thing he does when he comes, he sees Elimelech, he is now the priest, and he sees him. And he speaks to him in verse three and says, now therefore, what is under thine hand? Give me five loaves of bread in mine hand. And then he says, or what there is present. He said, if you don't have five loaves, I'll take four. 
just so I get something. I need some bread. Those with me are hungry. Have you come hungry tonight? He said, just give me what you've got. If you can't give me five loaves, five loaves would be best. But if you don't have five, I'll take four. If you don't have four, I'll take three. Just whatever you have, give it to me. Well, Elimelech responds to him and says, we got a problem. Said there's, verse four, there's no common bread. That means there's no bread that we eat every day here. You've come to the house of God. We don't have loaves of bread for you tonight, but we have something that David found. He said, I don't have any common bread, but in verse six, the priest gave him hollowed bread. For there was no bread there but the shoe bread that was taken from before the Lord to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. See, they had this task when they went in. They had to remove, after a certain number of days, they had to remove the bread from the table of showbread and they replaced it with hot bread. Lord, give us some hot manna. But that was the Lord's bread. See, they, they were constantly there saying, Lord, we want to feed your presence. That's what that bread is symbolic of. Now, God doesn't have to bless us tonight, but he will not bless us if we don't feed his presence. We have to make him welcome. It was a sign of saying, Lord, I need you in this place more than anything. So here it is. He said, I'm hungry. Would you give me something? He said, listen, I don't have any regular bread, but I've got some spiritual bread, not natural bread. Some of you have come tonight saying, Lord, I'm so hungry. And I'm not talking about hungry to go to the restaurant. I'm talking about eating from the bread of life and feasting at the table of the king from the manna of God. I've come to this place tonight because I'm hungry for something that only God can feed me. Last night at our home church, we were so thrilled. We just started the service just a few minutes and one of the couples in our church, they're tremendous soul winners and, and God allows them regularly to lead about 300 people a year, 350 people a year to the Lord. And all of a sudden, I, I, I see Jamie coming down from the back. She has this gentleman with her come down to the side and I come down from the from the platform and we're there praying and I asked him, I said, what's your name, sir? My name's Chalo. Chalo, what, what did you come for? He said, uh, I met these people at the restaurant. <laughs> said, there's something about them. Said, God, God started drawing me. He said, I've come to find something. And I said, well, did you find it? Yes, I did. Said, I came and I found the Lord Jesus Christ and he saved me my sins. I'm telling you, we had a time. He went farther than the restaurant. He got to eat of that bread that satisfies the hungry soul. I don't know what you're hungry for. If you're hungry for a blessing, I know who can feed it to you. If you're hungry for salvation, I know who can give it to you. I don't know what you hunger for, but I know you're in the right place tonight in the house of God and God has what you need. He came for natural bread, but God gave him spiritual bread. Something about that spiritual bread. I mean, when Elijah got fed with spiritual food, he could outrun a chariot. That means you can come in here tonight and you can have your aches and pains, but when you take one bite of the blessings that God has for you, and it's something how we forget about how we hurt and all the pain we have, just seems like that takes flight. Hold on now, I'm almost done, I'm getting there, I promise. So you think David would stop at that, oh no. No, don't stop at that, don't stop at just letting the Lord feed you a blessing tonight. Because see, you're gonna leave here and you're going back out into a cruel world. This is a wonderful environment tonight. Wonderful for me to preach and have an amen corner. Well, let me take that back. I've got an amen choir. They didn't know they were gonna be in the choir tonight, but they're there. And it's great to be in this environment. I mean, I love the singing. I love the presence of the Lord. But Reagan, I can't stay here forever. 
A little while, the McCamies will sing. If the Lord tarries is coming, they'll sing. We'll leave this place. And guess what? Every one of us are going back out into a cruel world out there. <laughs> David knew that. He said, I've got to leave this place. And by the way, he knew if he could just get to the house of God, there was safety there. Do you hear what I'm telling you? The reason you feel so good about being here tonight is the church of the living God, we know where the church is destined. The church has a destiny of overcoming the world. The church has a destiny of being united with Christ at the marriage supper of the Lamb. We know the church was bought and paid for with his own precious blood, the blood of God. And God says, I've already determined the church will overcome. But we gotta leave here. And he knew he had to leave. So David said in verse eight to Ahimelech, is there not here under thine hand spear or sword? For I have neither brought my sword nor my weapons with me. He said, I gotta get out of here and when I leave this place, I won't take a weapon with me. He says to the priest, are you carrying? See, he didn't, the priest didn't know what David was facing. David knew there were enemies out there wanting to kill him in a physical sense. But by the way, this is just, it's more than just a, just a physical story to us. There's a spiritual application. God says, when you leave here, you need to be locked and loaded. Well, a final reminder before we leave the air today, join us this week through Wednesday night at the Rubyville Community Church for our homecoming and revival services. Uh, again, this morning, if you're watching on Sunday, 9.30 a.m., we'll have lunch at noon, 2 p.m., an afternoon of worship with the Lord family, and then Sunday evening through Wednesday evening at 7.30 p.m. with evangelist Mike Blanton and Mike McCoy. Mike Blanton and Evidence will be singing. And then this Thursday through Saturday, uh, and even on next Sunday afternoon, Calvary will be a part of the uh, 75th Homecoming Revival for the City Mission Church uh, there in Ironton, Ohio. Service, service time begins at 7 p.m. with Pastor Jeff Cremeen. a busy week for us and another busy month, but God has been so good to us. Make sure you tune in next week. We'll share with you more from this month's free gift offer from the Calvin and Door Simmons Memorial Camp Meeting. God bless you as always is our prayer. Thank you for joining us today on Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are white, already to harvest. For more information about this ministry, contact us at Evangelistic Outreach Ministries, 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio, 45662, or toll free at 800-767-8713. You can also visit us online at calvinevans.org.